Okay, great. Well, um, let's begin. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for attending our webinar um, on the VLT Refrigeration Drive FC103 from Danfoss. My name is Michael Beckerman, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Specialist for North America. During today's interactive 60-minute session, our expert will introduce the FC-103's impressive range of efficiency and reliability-enhancing capabilities and the benefits for your industrial refrigeration system. Uh, webinar attendees are muted, um, but you are encouraged to submit any questions or comments to, the, uh, to our subject matter experts in the chat box on the left bottom corner of your screen. Uh, we will answer a select number of your submissions at the conclusion of the session. Lastly, um, this webinar is being recorded. That's kind of what took me a second, just to make sure the recording was working. Um, and you'll be emailed a copy of the session in the near future. Uh, we will probably also put it on YouTube uh, for longevity's sake as well. So, um, well, uh, I think we're pretty much ready to get started. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Brian Kelly with Danfoss Industrial Refrigeration. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me clearly. Um, yes, you can, Brian. Yes. All right, excellent. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Thank you all for joining. Again, my name is Brian Kelly. I have been working at Danfoss for 12 years. I came from um, uh, prior to uh, industrial refrigeration team. I was with the Danfoss uh, Power uh, Electronics, which where we produce VFDs. There, I was a global key account manager for Danfoss Drives. Um, and role was in food and beverage, where I was global key account manager for end user account uh, development, such as Nestle, Coca Cola, and Iser Bush. Today, we're excited to share with the group. For those who are not aware, Danfoss does manufacture VFDs. Uh, we've been doing that for 50 years, so we're pretty excited to partner with uh, Danfoss Industrial Refrigeration and take their nearly, you know, over 80 years experience of refrigeration knowledge and it's been integrated into uh, process control functions into a dedicated industrial uh, variable frequency drive for refrigeration. That is the Danfoss Drive FC-103, which is a frequency converter. Uh, so now we're, we're excited about with the, the industrial refrigeration team and market is that we will be able to offer our Danfoss industrial refrigeration customers Danfoss drives. So moving forward, uh, we're going to share with you today um, where our Danfoss drives are produced, Danfoss quality, uh, organization support behind Danfoss drives uh, for the industrial refrigeration, uh, how we meet uh, from tech support to uh, quality, uh, and, and just to share with you our proven reliability in, in our products. So moving ahead. Um, just for those who might not be aware, uh, Danfoss as a global organization, uh, if we look at just North America market, um, Danfoss uh, basically is 12 factories in North America with over 3,400 employees. And, and our growth teams are up there in the right-hand corner, infrastructure, food, energy, climate. And from my experience with the global uh, key count end users, you know, if you look at the Anheuser-Busch people, you know, they're constantly challenging Danfoss. How can we do more with less? We want to make more beer, for example, using less water, less CO2, less energy. So Danfoss' goal is to create those solutions for, for our end-user customers, for example. And just to share from how Danfoss Group, when you think of 24,000 employees, uh, we're basically four groups. There's Danfoss Power Solutions, Danfoss Cooling, which is uh, what we're representing here today, uh, the industrial refrigeration market, Danfoss Drives, and Danfoss Heating. So because of the overlap, it makes sense uh, working together, uh, Danfoss Cooling and Danfoss Drives, that we can support the customers with our knowledge and expertise. So if you're thinking of Danfoss as a global, you know, we're four segments, but we're obviously working together, one company, you know, one way where we can, you know, specifically design product and solutions for our customers for the applications. Now in Dan Danfoss Industrial Refrigeration has Danfoss drives added to the, you know, product portfolio. 
So for all of our, our customers and, and uh, sales reps out here, uh, your your contact for drives would also be your contact, your current industrial refrigeration contact. So again, moving forward, uh, the markets that you're supporting from cold storage to you know dairy meat, uh, even marine applications, you know the VFDs can be applied into these applications. And so today, what we'll do is we'll share with you, you know, some of the things that Danfoss has uh, kind of uh, built in uh, to our drive. Our goal here is to be easy to use, easy to work with. Uh, we will want to make it uh, faster for you for commissioning and setup. And again, using the knowledge from uh, the last 80 years um, where we can apply it for our, our industrial refrigeration market. So again, we're excited uh, from the drive side, the uh, longest producing, mass producing VFD manufacturer in the world, uh, 50 years. Uh, Believe it or not, it was actually a refrigeration um, application. It was Carlsberg Brewery that approached Dan Foss. Uh, they, they asked Dan Foss, hey, we, we would like uh, support in this process control. It was actually for a packaging application. And so that is where Dan Foss then, you know, R&D got involved and, and actually first uh, started mass producing VFDs. Uh, one thing you'll see, VLT is a trademark name. Um, you know, back in 1968, Dan Foss did try to trademark uh, VFD, but uh, was not allowed to do that. So VLT is an acronym for Velocity Control. So um, if you see VLT, that, that's Dan Foss's uh, drives brand name, uh, just for those who did not know that. Okay, if you're asking the drives business, global business, uh, what, what are we talking here? Just to give you an idea, Danfoss uh, produces over one million drives every year for the for the global industry. I, that could be mining, that could be, you know, marine application, food and beverage, HVAC. But to give you an idea, we're talking, you know, nearly 1.5 billion U.S. dollars. Globally, we we have installed uh, or have delivered over 18 million drives. So when you're thinking uh, moving forward and supporting customers, you know we're looking at it from uh, not only on the application and pre-sale side, but also on the aftermarket. How we're going to support our, our customers? We have product. I, I go into some of these breweries. We we have drives that are over 20 years old, and so Danfoss's goal is not only to be easy to do business with, but also to make sure we're supporting um, our customers moving forward. Later on, I have like a three-minute slide, and just to give you a little. Um, uh, overview of our factory. We're actually producing drives here in the U.S., uh, just about an hour west of Chicago, uh, town of Loves Park, Illinois. Uh, Rockford would be the closest bigger city. So right on I-39, uh, open door policy. We love to bring in visitors. The power electronic guys love to show off the factory. People can't believe this, this size factory. All we're doing is producing VFDs. So open invite there, we can arrange it. We, we offer trainings there as well. There's a training lab. We, we have over 50 engineers uh, just working on uh, R&D for the globe. Uh, it's one of our centers of excellence. So uh, later on in a couple slides, I'll give you just a brief overview of that, just a quick video. So we're really excited about it. And, and again, industrial refrigeration, working with, with drives and, and again, just to support our, our customers and, and provide you solutions for the applications. This is just to give you an idea of where some of the factories are for the drives. Uh, again, I mentioned uh, Danfoss uh, Drives USA is Loves Park. Again, it's just west of uh, O'Hare by about an hour. Uh, we also have a center in Raleigh um, uh, where there we're doing medium voltage. Um, again, it's just another product offering typically uh, used in like high power solutions. Um, from really large uh, VFD applications. So kind of a, a, a different animal compared to what we'd probably see in industrial refrigeration, but it is another uh, technology that Danfoss does offer. We do have factories where we're proud from a drive standpoint. When we're talking about quality, it is integrated, all the components. We make our own IGBTs, our own printed circuit boards, and those are done in uh, actually just outside of Christine, Denmark. Uh, we have a factory there where we're actually producing our IGBTs in the town Flensburg, Germany. Uh, it's kind of covered up. There's too many red dots in, in Europe there. But again, we, what we do is we do have factories globally that are supporting those markets uh, for China, for example, or India. 
So when we're thinking, you know, I told you earlier about over 18 million drives have been installed in, in, in the world, um, U.S. being one of the largest uh, users of the VFDs, so we get a lot of equipment coming in from all over the world, a lot of OEM equipment. So Danfoss has world-class uh, expertise and best-in-class for aftermarket support, you know, with the products. The advantage we have is w one of our products can ship all over the world. It's the same product. So from a, a service aftermarket support, uh, we don't have an issue where it's the same part number wherever we ship in the world. Uh, it's one advantage. So we, we don't make something just for this region of the world, like Europe, for example, CE or, um, you know, CUL, for example. So the drives are built for the globe. So it's going to have your CE, your UL, your CUL. So whether you guys are working or products are going into Canada or, for example, or maybe you're, you're exporting into uh, Europe, not to worry. Uh, we have programs, too, for our end users. That's something, you know, when you're talking with your customers for aftermarket where they might have older products, there's programs that Danfoss can do from retrofit and upgrades, and, and these are other uh, best-in-class uh, support service programs that you can offer uh, to your clients as well. So Danfoss, again, uh, you know, we're trying to be number one in the world in, in VFDs, just pure VFD manufacturer. Uh, we're, we're there at number two and uh, working our way up. Uh, and part of that, too, is just because we want to be easy to do business with and obviously support all our customers. So, you know, some people, you know, what are, what are VFDs or how they're used? Um, it just a quick overview. Uh, again, if I go back to the Carlsberg uh, Brewery, you know, they wanted VFD for process control. Uh, you can imagine a conveyor and a bunch of beer bottles and 100 motors start up at the same time. What happens, those bottles will just all fall over unless there's like a, uh, um, a smooth ramp startup time. So just a simple application, but just to visually give you an idea. Obviously, from mechanical wear and tear, you know, the VFDs are actually, you know, reducing the mechanical stress uh, by controlling the speed of the uh, AC motors. And, and then on other applications, you know, the, the VFDs are used to convert, you know, uh, you know, energy from renewable resources like windmills and, and uh, solar panels and things like that. So there's a lot of use um, for VFDs, and if we look, uh, one thing you might not realize is the world's energy consumption, you know, 20% of that electrical energy. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities where we can actually, you know, reduce that electrical energy by applying VFDs to these electrical motors. And, and for our industry and our target applications, typically what you're seeing would be obviously pumps, fans, and compressors. And if we just look at those opportunities, you'll see there, there's quite a lot that we can do to actually improve the process, obviously, and, and protect the equipment, but also from the end user standpoint, uh, one thing I can share is all these end users, you can quickly look online, they all report sustainability reports, and they'll show you their STIs and KPIs of what they're trying to do. Uh, their 2020, you know, and now it's extended probably 2025 uh, goals to reduce the consumption of water and energy. So the, there, there is a lot of opportunity where we can, you know, work uh, to support you with your customers. And, and, and what are we talking here? So obviously there is the environmental global impact of, you know, obviously reducing the energy consumption. But if we look uh, from the financial impact, like what, what are we talking here? That really, the top 10 uh, food and beverage customers in, in, in the globe are really doing 80% of the business. So, uh, and what are we talking? Just in beverage, that would be like $325 million a year they're spending on uh, VFDs. Uh, if you look at the food and beverage, and, and when food and beverage, uh, or on the food, if you get like on the high-end packaging, that's where uh, I'm mentioning their servo. Uh, that does not include that. That gets... You can imagine like bubblegum, you know, wrapping or, you know, even cigarette tobacco packaging. That is really high precision control. We're, we're not talking about that. I'm just talking just in the food industry. That uh, for the BMD investment is three times uh, the beverage industry. So now you're looking, you know, uh, nearly a billion uh, dollars in VFDs are spent per year. And again, if we just focus on the specific applications like fan, pump, compressor, you know, we got a lot of opportunities. If you look, uh, you know, the slide with all of the end users out there, and, and again, they're all kind of, uh, with the consolidation, you could see, 
you know, we can we can do a lot to uh, work with some of the corporate engineering, you know, from the end user side to get Danfoss specified, which makes your life easier than when you're working with your end users, uh, for example. So uh, you can see, obviously, there is uh, quite a lot of opportunities for us with VFDs. There's uh, a lot are being purchased, and, uh, um, and and the reason again, process control uh, and, and to enhance and, and increase the efficiency of the system. So one of the things to show you is, uh, you know, why Danfoss when you're considering as a VFD supplier. Uh, Danfoss is really committed to quality. Uh, in the last five years, it's been pretty amazing to watch their their factories and uh, uh, they're challenging themselves. They're going more into this like TS16949, which is really like this high level automated or automotive. Uh, ISO standard uh, to really stay on top of the quality. And again, you'll see some of that from our, our video and the automation in a couple uh, upcoming slides. So again, the Danfoss factory is really committed uh, to, to present the highest quality product and, and we'll show you some of the things they do uh, beforehand before you receive a VFD to know that you're gonna have a high quality product and uh, it'll work at the highest level. Some of the things they do in in-house, and in the video we'll, we'll, we'll show this. Again, this is power electronic equipment, so obviously uh, vibration, heat, uh, things like that are, are, uh, are, are things that can harm, obviously, power electronics. That's the, you think of control boards and the electronics. Uh, so Danfoss does a lot of testing in-house. Um, you know, again, to meet all the ratings, uh, we have amazing test labs. Uh, in the factory, I don't know if we'll be able to see it in the video, but in the basement, there, there's full uh, there's motors where the VFDs are all tested on a, a motor with full load amp and uh, voltage testing. So again, we we are actually spinning motors, so uh, pretty pretty cool. And then the automation, Danfoss has been its own printed circuit boards. Again, the idea is if we're vertically integrated with all our uh, supplies, uh, all the components, again, uh, we can also be best in class from a, uh, from ISO standard from supply chain, but also from a quality standpoint. And, and then in manufacturing, so some of the drives, uh, components and things uh, are, are built in Denmark. So Denmark is Danfoss headquarters for those that might not be aware. I don't know if I mentioned that. So a Danish family owned company, only about 24,000 employees. Uh, so. Uh, we're proud of that, and and, uh, and and we're following the manufacturing processes not only in Denmark but also in the U.S. And then this is why I mentioned motor load test. So the drives are actually put in a test grain, and uh, full simple uh, full um, analysis is done. And again, as if there is something uh, wrong with the board or something, for example, that it's found out before the drive even leaves the factory. So again, we, we kind of joke around internally that your drives are slightly used, uh, but again, we, we put a full load test on, on the product before they leave our building. And when you're thinking uh, that, when I mentioned the Carlsberg application, uh, in the middle top there on the left side, that was a VFD, that was a five horsepower. Uh, Picture about three feet high, three feet wide, uh, oil cooled. Uh, when you're looking at uh, what's happened over time and, and the technology, it's quite amazing. You know, the lead times, for example, shown there on the bottom. Now we can produce VFDs in less than you know two hours, where it used to be two months. Uh, and when you think of the the variants, uh, variants are different options. So every time, if a customer says, "Well, no, I want one with maybe a, a you know field bus of." Ethernet IP, that's another variant. And, and so you can really truly customize Danfoss drives and build it exactly the way you want it. And if you uh, consider all the different variants we offer with our entire product portfolio, you know, from a supply chain, we went from, you know, one unit, you know, to now uh, we can actually configure 25 million different variants. So quite, quite extreme. Uh, uh, and that's where, again, Danfoss commitment to not only the quality, but also on our supply chain and our manufacturing processes. All right, so this will be the video uh, that we're going to share with you. This is just an overview of the Loves Park, Illinois factory. And uh, yeah, we're gonna start that.
Dan Foss is engineering dreams of tomorrow by creating sustainable solutions utilizing the latest technological advancements. All Dan Foss Drive locations operate as a global network, sharing technological or process improvements as they're made. The global implementation of continuous improvement activity results in a uniform product. So no matter where a drive is shipped from, it will be the same quality you expect from Danfoss. In the LEED Certified High Power Drive Competency Center in Loves Park, Illinois, Danfoss manufactures fractional through megawatt variable frequency drives. This state-of-the-art facility is designed to facilitate energy savings, prevent waste, and encourage innovation. Danfoss was the first mass producer of variable frequency drives and continues to build upon years of proven experience. Our mechanical, electrical, and software engineering teams are dedicated to designing dependable, high-quality products. Danfoss invests heavily to support intensive testing and analysis in product development. At the High Power Competency Center, our focus is on design, manufacturing, and production of drives from 100 horsepower and up, Danfoss utilizes technology to drive human processes, such as part selection, fastening, and testing to ensure accuracy and improve customer field quality. Reuse of proven tech and sub-assemblies result in high volume, lean production, and short lead times. Utilizing automation to remove focus from repetitive tasks, like counting screws, frees up intellect to focus on process improvements. Danfoss encourages innovative thinking to make production more efficient and improve quality. Assemblers experience the production process every day and are actively involved in the continuous improvement process. Danfoss manufactures our own printed circuit boards, which allows us to control quality. All PCBs are automatically inspected for missing or incorrectly mounted components and tested for connections and performance. Utilizing our on-site motor room, Danfoss tests every drive before it leaves the factory. The energy we generate for testing systems in production and in the lab is regenerated back into the line. Across the globe, state-of-the-art, fully automatic testing cranes run each drive at 100% full load with varying speeds for an extended period of time. This allows Danfoss to build reliably consistent products that deliver peace of mind. Danfoss products and application training maximizes the value of your investment by enabling you to minimize downtime through streamlined setup and worry-free operation. Comprehensive service training ensures that in the event that something does go wrong, a qualified service professional is only steps away. All of our customers have immediate access to the Danfoss service and support team around the clock, 24-7, 365 days a year through the hotline. From demand, design, building, and testing to delivery to your front door, it's the passion, commitment, teamwork and loyalty Danfoss employees have for all of our customers that pulls all of the technology and innovation together to make Danfoss the undisputed authority in high power and AC drives. Okay. Well, uh, thank you everybody for just allowing that. It, it, it's a good uh, opportunity for you to see the factory, see the level of uh, quality that, that we're mentioning. Um, there was a, a some examples where you could actually see where uh, the drives are being tested on full, you know, full load on motors. Um, there was an example, we actually have test lab facilities, but also training lab facilities. Uh, so that's something too at, at a, a date and time where we can also offer uh, training as well uh, for operators and, and uh, end users and just any of our partners there at the Loves Park, Illinois facility, or we can, you know, make other arrangements, but just something um, to, to also let everybody know we can do that. And then in conclusion, again, it's uh, Danfoss is working toward these automotive, uh, uh, military, best-in-class type of standards for quality, and, uh, and, and obviously we want to be best-in-class um, uh, with supplying, you know, our Danfoss drives to the market. So moving ahead, um, so just now, this will be a brief overview of some of the functionality built into the Danfoss VLT uh, uh, FC103 uh, frequency converter drive for refrigeration. And um, just give uh, everyone a, an idea of sizes. Uh, so uh, when you're talking to BFD, people want to know voltage. Uh, 
you know, is it uh, 480 volt or if it's going to Canada, perhaps it's 600 or even 690 volt. So this is just a quick overview. So what we say fractional horsepower would be, you know, from the power, uh, like for example, 1.5 horsepower up to, you know, 650 horsepower. Uh, Danfoss does have other product lines that can meet uh, higher demand. Uh, for example, I mentioned medium voltage and things like that. So the, there are other uh, products that meet, uh, you know, all the requirements that uh, VFD can, can have. Uh, but again, in this uh, drive, uh, what we're, again, targeting is industrial refrigeration, which would typically fit in, in these power ranges. So just because you might not see it doesn't mean we don't have an offering. It just, uh, again, um, this product is designed for, for these ranges for power and voltage. Okay, so what, what's interesting when working with the end users too, a lot of, uh, you'll notice too, is on site at these, let's say, food processing. They're having less people uh, on site, less knowledge and, and things like that. So. The demand back to us as a supplier is like, hey, we, we have to be easy to work with, but we also want a, a more capability built into the drive, for example. So now we're, you know, from IoT to um, predictive maintenance, uh, where not for the drive itself, but where the drive can actually do predictive maintenance for the motor, for example. So there's a lot of uh, requests for that where we could then uh, uh, simulate or provide like a warning or if it's on a PLC, you know, warning, hey, check out this motor that, you know, there there could be uh, something going on. So the idea is like the drive could then use the intelligence that's in there and you, you'll learn that these drives now, uh, the capability are, you know, from PLC control, uh, which, uh, or to even more exotic where we can do uh, uh, servo type control just in a VFD. So, so the drives are actually getting more and more intelligent and, and that's the expectations moving forward that uh, you're going to have less and less people on site and, and basically, you know, you're going to need something to kind of alert that, hey, you know, maybe come check this out. Um, one advantage Danfoss has had, uh, Danfoss makes compressors, makes motors, um, in obviously BFDs, uh, Danfoss approach has always been like no bundling required. We're not out there trying to package that you have to buy our product with another product or our motor, for example. So Danfoss is a really truly plug and play. Doesn't matter on a field bus. We have customers that maybe are shipping in other country and they're using Siemens on a PLC. Uh, Danfoss doesn't care if it's Profibus or Profinet or, or maybe here it's a uh, Rockwell PLC and Ethernet IP or even prior to that was DeviceNet. So the advantage again, Danfoss can operate uh, and it's an open device and shake hands with all different types of motors. Uh, you might start hearing about permanent magnet motors. Uh, Danfoss actually makes one for the food and beverage on the packaging side. So. Uh, Danfoss, just to assure you, has the capability to actually control uh, PM motors as well. It's just a standard AC motor. Uh, again, you'll learn maybe or you've read people are going to PM motors as just a higher efficient uh, motor. Um, but again, good news is uh, not not a problem for Danfoss. So uh, we can do that, and uh, and we are doing that on a lot of uh, OEM equipment. It'll be our VFD with a uh, some AC motor. And again, getting back to the intelligence, the expectations are, you know, um, the drive has, actually has more capability in it. And some of those things like, for example, uh, you know, here we're showing motor winding, insulation detection failure, um, or, uh, you know, basically the controls of the drive can, you know, if it's sensing uh, an issue, like for example, earth fault, you know, you can program the drive uh, to, if this happens, then, you know, uh, bypass or, or do this or send an alarm or uh, there's a lot of flexibility and again uh, Danfoss can have a lot of control built into the drive or Danfoss could be you know receiving uh, input uh, from a controller telling the drive what to do so we have a lot of built-in uh, uh, smarts built into the drive um, for robust durability here really if you're thinking from a temperature we have a lot of other uh, players in the market where they actually have to derate if the drive ambient temperature gets a uh, certain uh, height, like over 120 degrees, then, then you have to start to derate. Uh, what that means is they have to size a drive larger than needed. Uh, part of that is just the, um, 
you know, the drive has to be able to cool itself off. Uh, where Danfoss, we can go down to zero F and 122 F. Um, and the advantage then is maybe if you're in a, a hot engine room, for example, um, you're not going to be a, have to add maybe air conditioning, for example, or something from the temperature. Or if you're in another environment where obviously it's getting colder, maybe you don't need to use uh, heaters, for example. Um, what we talked about, conformal coating, printed circuit board, we're used to from experience uh, working in water wastewater treatment facilities, so a lot of uh, acidic type you know, environment and corrosive environment. So uh, therefore, you know, we, we coat these uh, circuit boards where uh, basically the ambient, uh, you know, uh, environment uh, and also the, the uh, what's in the environment obviously is not going to corrode the, the electronics of the drive. And, and again, we, we want, you know, over 10 plus years of life expectancy of the drive. So we try and include a lot of uh, uh, a capability into it so that you know there is no issues and obviously we can and have the drive where it's enclosure itself so you're not having to take a drive put in another enclosure we can easily supply standard product in NEMA 12 or NEMA 4x if that's uh, required. One other thing we can do is like this is just an example I like that it's uh, actually from a brewery but to show the capability uh, where a lot of our uh, uh, let's just say other manufacturers out there, they have to have space and and things like that. And it's for cooling, cooling the electronics where Danfoss capability is we, we just need certain space above and below, but we can go what they call book style. In the advantage is if you're somebody and you're putting our, our drives in a panel, for example, now you have uh, uh, less panel space required or maybe less multiple panels. So again, we're trying to make it easy and, and really um, uh, to take up less space. Um, if you're using field bus, let's say um, Ethernet IP, you can daisy chain. So basically you can make a true ring configuration daisy chain. So again, we're trying to make it faster for commissioning and setup, uh, power loop the mains, uh, easy to, to get access at the product. Um, again, just to be easy to, to, to work with. Uh, built-in things, this is built in their drive, it's not just specific for the FC-103 for the refrigeration drive, but all Danfoss drives are built to protect the application. So we have built-in for overload current and torque, uh, uh, not only protecting the drive, but obviously protecting the motors um, from short circuit on the motors, switching on the input. Um, a lot of things from our experience is Danfoss is just in, in, integrated into the drive Again, because we want to keep you guys up uh, and running and, and keep your uh, your application and operations running uh, smoothly without downtime. Um, you know, EMC compliance, you're, you'll maybe hear about harmonics and, and things like that. Um, DAPUS does a lot where we uh, include inside our drive, uh, like for example, built in RFI. Um, what we're doing is just from experience, we know it just uh, less components that uh, either the panel builder or the end user has to buy to help uh, uh, protect with, uh, for example, the you know electromagnetic maybe interference. For example, um, in Europe it, it might be uh, it's more commonplace I think just because of the manufacturing is located in a residential or near a hospital, for example. Where obviously in the U.S. we have a little more space, but uh, these are things that Danfoss does build in, and then if you have questions about harmonics and things like that, again, uh, just ask us, and we can uh, we have solutions for that if that's a requirement or if it's listed and again in the specification. Um, again, what we're trying to do is is really uh, uh, identify anything that can happen prior to uh, like uh, for for loss of downtime. Uh, for example, if uh, you're in areas where there's power outages and things like that. The Danfoss does have capability where, you know, if it's a quick uh, power drop, uh, we can actually keep keep running without uh, losing the motor, for example. Um, you know, you hear stuff where maybe they lost power over a weekend and, and things like that, and then the whole process stops. So there are some things that are capable of the Danfoss drive that's built in. And again, we, we want to keep you, you know, running longer, for example, and, and we do a lot of things to, to, to uh, identify a problem before it even happens, for example, with short circuit and uh, um, you know uh, missing uh, phases, for example, on the motor. 
Uh, when we're using the drive, again, everything's built for a minimum 10 years on all the components. Uh, the DC chokes, again, that, that's a, a type of filtering that we put in uh, uh, for the product, again, to enhance the, the, the length of the product. Uh, you'll hear about AC line chokes and things like that. So some other manufacturers out there actually have to add additional filtering to meet uh, certain specifications. Uh, Danfoss, on the other hand, built in uh, the EC chokes. What this allows is obviously extend the life of, of uh, the internal components, but it also meets uh, certain thresholds uh, requirements. And uh, again, we, we just include it with the drive. Uh, and it's more efficient than AC chokes, but again, just from our experience in doing this for over 50 years, uh, you know, we're trying to keep the drive alive, uh, working for as long as possible, 24 seven, start up, start down, it, it, you know, doesn't matter. And obviously, uh, you know, with no maintenance, uh, so therefore low cost ownership. Um, for us, what we were trying to show is ease of use. So with this 103 uh, refrigeration drive, uh, Danfoss, again, working with our industrial refrigeration and cooling experience, there's a lot of uh, software uh, built into the drive, so it's speaking, you know, refrigeration language. Again, why we're, we're trying to put in wizards, uh, we call a wizard, uh, setup wizard to make it very easy uh, for you to work with in the setup, whether it's a fan, a pump, a compressor. Um, so the drive is actually working with you along as you're, you're installing uh, uh, the VFD and setting up uh, and commissioning the drive. Uh, the other advantage we have is there's an onboard manual, which is great. Uh, you actually can hit an info key and it'll help you with even on the troubleshooting, it'll like recommend in this bottom right hand corner uh, motor current. So it, it's uh, informing the um, the operator what to do, for example, when entering uh, uh, a parameter set up in, in the drive. Uh, what we can do too with the drive is very user friendly from a, a customized uh, display. So the operator or the OEM can actually decide what they want to see uh, on the screen of the, uh, you'll hear LCP. LCP is like HMI, uh, Danfoss Lingo LCP's local control panel. So what we can do is actually uh, um, utilize the display to show what you want to see. For this case, it's just giving an example that, uh, you know, for the condensing application, you, you can set it to see the, uh, condensing temperature, outside air, and, and uh, saturated condensing temperature. Again, it's just flexible, and it, it, we're just trying to show you that you can utilize it, you know, for your specific application. Uh, and it, this goes back to what I was saying earlier about the info key. So not only uh, you're getting description of the parameter, for example, there's the onboard manual. So you can actually read uh, uh, a description telling uh, the operator. So uh, it's great setup. And, and again, uh, what's nice too is with our keypad, you can actually remove it even if it's running and, and plug it into another VFD, Danfoss VFD. Um, so again, easy to do, to, to work with. And uh, in the advantage for us, it's the same interface, whether you guys are using a, you know, a two horsepower or a 300 horsepower drive, it's the same user interface. So. The good news is you don't have to worry like if it's changing, you have to learn a whole new, you know, parameter structure, for example. So the layout. So we we internally, you know, uh, know that if you know one of our, our BFDs, you you know them all. So it's the same wiring, the same parameter programming. So again, if they have any familiarity with one of our drives, uh, nothing's changed, and and we keep that that compatibility uh, even going from different. Uh, product portfolio within the Danfoss portfolio. So again, uh, just to keep it consistent for the operator. Uh, one thing is people ask, hey, can if I have multiple VFDs, can I, you know, in a program, the, the motor commissioning, can I copy it? And, and this is to show, yeah, uh, we can do that. So uh, you can easily copy, you know, the program from the drive to the LCP, uh, the HMI, and then you can remove that and plug that into another uh, drive and then, um, And then it'll it'll prompt you then to uh, you know copy to and copy from so um, it, it's really easy to, to to work with and and it'll it'll walk you through it how to do it but quick setup then so therefore you can go from motor uh, drive motor uh, 
and easily uh, commission for setup. Um, there's also quick menus, so uh, personal menus. So uh, if you're using for similar applications, you can actually, um, again, the drive is built for many applications, so there's probably 500 parameters uh, in a setup, but really we can make it as quick uh, and easy to work with as possible. So you have the option, you can actually make your own personal menu and uh, um, save the parameters that you want just for that application, and therefore every time you use it, it it's the same uh, setup. Uh, there's a quick setup guide, which I'll be able to show you um, in another slide. One interesting thing is, you know, what we hear of uh, everything's working, you leave the site, then, you know, something's going on. Well, you can actually hit uh, in, in the quick menu, you can do a change made. And you can see if anyone's changed any of the parameter setup. So it's, uh, it's a nice feature to have. Um, again, the personal menu, so that allows you then, you can actually edit a, and choose up to 50 different parameters to, to keep as your personal menu um, if, you, if you choose to do that. Uh, here's a quick menu, again, uh, set up. So it, it's really the basic stuff uh, uh, for parameter setup just to, uh, to, to get the motor uh, turning. Um, one thing is that you're missing the, uh, I think that's all of them there, but um, it, 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 again, it's just a quick setup for, um, you know, you're gonna set up your motor nameplate data into the, the VFD, uh, your, your minimum speed and maximum speed reference, and then ramp up, ramp down. Uh, motor AMA, uh, one thing Dan Foss can do is, uh, we don't have to spin the motor, but we can run a, a automated uh, motor adaptation. So basically the drive being wired to the motor can actually uh, kind of enhance the performance of the drive, and it can uh, actually send uh, some pulses uh, of current then just to kind of uh, get get the sense of the rotor stator and uh, it only takes a couple minutes but it's just something we recommend it, it uh, just fine tunes the BFD with the, with the specific motor so it's an option uh, again it's uh, it's not difficult to do um, and what we're again just a reminder with with our product uh, again we can meet a lot of the different applications and requirements. Uh, again, low low cost of ownership. Um, we, we include a lot of things built into the drive, like they're showing here with the DC chokes. Again, what we're trying to do is increase the lifetime of all the products. Uh, here we're showing uh, VFDs with uh, a bypass capability. Um, so again, we have standard product that has that for like a one fan, a, a one pump, um, you know, uh, application. Uh, another thing is the flexibility, like here, uh, when you see the VFDs, that's a, a, a NEMA uh, 4X uh, uh, inverters, and, and you can actually skid mount, uh, so there is some flexibility where, you know, to save time on uh, insulation from running, you know, motor motor wiring, uh, you can actually mount the, the VFDs right, right near the motors and the applications, and again, in the enclosure that's needed. Uh, what we're trying to say is uh, here with the heat management, again, uh, we want to dissipate the heat uh, away from the, the VFD. So uh, there with the skid mount is uh, they're just putting a back plate um, to direct airflow through that to, to cool the heat sink. In the bottom picture, uh, we're showing some flexibility where you can actually mount the VFDs up to 350 horsepower. You can mount them on the wall actually. Uh, again, side by side, book style, you don't need any uh, um, separation. And what you can do is direct airflow outside the mechanical room, for example, and, and to go across the heat sink and back out. Um, the bottom right picture on the right is showing then, or the alternative where you can actually put it, uh, Danfoss has like a little pedestal kit here and it's showing airflow going in the bottom and then the heat dissipating from the top. Um, and again, we can remove 85% of that heat, you know, to again, make the drive more efficient, but also to lower the control room uh, temperature. So there's some um, things that we can do. Again, the flexibility to meet all your installation uh, requirements. Uh, obviously maximum, you know, your uptime. Uh, again, this is just a reminder, you know, we're, we're protecting uh, not only the motor and uh, the, the process equipment, but obviously trying to enhance the, the life of the drive, but we can, you know, install the drives in some pretty extreme uh, 
applications, like for example, 122 degree F. So um, we, we do have some um, flexibility, and, and again, without having D-rate, which means you got to oversize the VFD for the application. And in and, and Danfoss case, if it falls under that temperature, then uh, there's there's no requirement for that. Uh, some of the things also uh, we do get asked once in a while. It's more uh, um, we we have standard opportunity or product, but we'll, we'll get asked for uh, basically specifications for quite uh, um, DVD-T filters or input reactors or you know it could come over from uh, specification either from the end user or maybe the um, um, uh, uh, engineering design firm. Uh, but we can do some uh, other interesting applications where maybe it's a NEMA 3R uh, uh, panel, uh, again, for one BFD. Uh, uh, we, we do a lot in oil and gas, and that's why they're showing that application where, uh, you know, in Texas, the, the drive is in this panel mounted right by the, you know, the uh, oil well and for the pump application. So, so Danfoss can do a lot of different um, enclosure requirements uh, for, for these applications. Uh, also, this is just to share, you know, here's a NEMA 12 with the uh, integrated mains uh, disconnect. Uh, again, obviously, we're trying to protect the not only the safety of uh, the equipment, but maybe, you know, someone's, op or, you know, performing maintenance on a piece of equipment. Obviously, this will obviously increase the safety, not only machine, but obviously uh, the, the operator uh, working. And the advantage of what we're showing here is we're not having to take a VFD put in a, a panel, and now you have a VFD panel. You're actually getting the VFD in its own enclosure with the with the mains disconnect. Uh, part of that I mentioned earlier was the VLT wizard. Um, again, it, it's just uh, trying to improve uh, your commissioning time and, and make it very easy for the operator or who's doing the startup uh, to understand. Um, and design it around the application for a compressor or a condenser, or, you know, or a pump, um, and make it really easy for them uh, to use. Um, part of the advantage too is with our uh, Danfoss uh, tech support, we we do offer 24/7 free tech support. Um, uh, please note the factory they're on uh, a central time zone, but uh, one of the engineers um, actually will uh, be on call then. Uh, so they take turns doing that, and, and again, they're there to help. They're used to a third shift call where uh, you know it might be a mechanical or a mechanic, and not used to working with VFDs. So um, uh, the advantage is we're not asking for you know to have a contract for service. This is just something that Danfoss will do. Um, uh, so that's something that uh, you can see. You can even look on Danfoss Drive's uh, website, which we'll show you at the end, where you can actually look at that. Uh, um, from our service and, and tech support areas and the phone number to call. So uh, again, we're, we're trying to be easy to work with and uh, make sure you're, you guys are comfortable. Um, some requests are, hey, we want to program it over a computer. Uh, no problem. Danfoss does have a free motion control, which is MCT10 tool. So uh, again, motion control tool that you can download. Uh, basically, you can save the project to your laptop. So we'll, we'll get some interest uh, from uh, maybe service uh, technicians where they can actually save jobs uh, on their laptop. So if they're out there, um, you know, servicing equipment and, and they're adding maybe a VFD, they'll have all the parameter programs saved to to the laptop, to the control tool. So it is, it's another option um, uh, for our, uh, you know, for programming, whether if you don't want to stand from the VFD, you can, you know, utilize this motion control tool. And again, there's a website uh, for drives.danfoss.us where you can uh, download the free tool. Uh, well, here we're showing modular build. This is on a smaller product, less than five horsepower. But the advantage we have is later on, if your customer decides, okay, now uh, instead of, you know, uh, controlling uh, four to 20 milliamp, now uh, we're gonna go on to Ethernet IP. Um, there's a card that's right behind that HMI or what we call the local control panel that y your customer or you can actually buy and install uh, and plug right in. So the advantage you have is even if your, uh, you know, the control uh, changes in the future and, and people are going maybe more to field bus, for example, 
the option. You don't have to replace the whole drive. It's just an option card that you can you, you can upgrade and plug right in. So again, really plug and play uh, and make it really easy uh, for you guys uh, it, as things change in the future. And again, some of the field buses. So uh, typically, uh, you, you know, we're asked Modbus, uh, Profinet, Profibus would be more Europe. Um, but here, obviously, Ethernet IP with Rockwell. So for Modbus RTU and Metasys, that, that's built in. Uh, then we have other options. Uh, again, this is an example uh, there. That card is a BACnet uh, card. So that just to show you is that it's just an option card that fits right behind the local control panel. So again, it's something that they can add at a later time. Uh, and again, easy to, easy to work with. Uh, one of the things that with this product is we have a built-in refrigerant uh, table. Um, and, and so this is just an example where, you know, if you're using ammonia, you know, it'll take the property of the refrigeration into account. So Danfoss has integrated the, the process control into the FC-103. Uh, again, providing flexibility either to the controller um, or if you're going to use the uh, there's a functionality, a PID uh, functionality, which is a control loop uh, feedback uh, uh, of the FC-103 that you can follow the set point value, for example, uh, temperature, for example. So again, it, it just to make it easy uh, uh, when they're doing the commissioning uh, on the drive. So a lot of things we try to include. Um, uh, this is an example where, you know, if we just look at the red boxes, you know, uh, what was the VFD doing in these cases? So, you know, they're showing there on the far right, um, you know, with the condenser, uh, you know, we're, we're monitoring uh, the pressure according to demand, uh, and then you can modulate the speed based on, you know, the the set point, for example. So, uh, again, the same the same variable frequency drive, the FC-103, can be used in all the applications that you have in, in your uh, industrial refrigeration system. You know, for pump and fan control, uh, some of the things, obviously, you know, why are customers applying? Um, if you're not familiar, um, you know, there's an affinity law with utilizing BFD for reducing speed uh, the, what will happen with the power consumption. So this was just a quick overview to show, for example, if you reduce the speed by 20%, you'll actually reduce the power consumption of the, uh, of the fans. And when we're looking for, you know, condenser fan control, the, the advantage with this VFD is we can operate, you know, multiple fans in parallel uh, or obviously a single fan. Uh, we're, we're monitoring the floating condensing temperature to adapt uh, to the outdoor temperature. And, and obviously, you know, we're trying to improve the overall system, uh, COP, for example. Um, and then if we're, let's see here. You know, for uh, pump uh, applications, again, uh, some of the uh, setup in, into the, the drive softwares, uh, they can actually detect no flow or low flow, and it's a way that where the drive can be programmed to, you know, either elicit a warning or alarm, or you know, in a case of like, you know, uh, uh, you know, just alert the operation or the controller. So uh, again, the idea is we're trying to improve the COP and, and improve uh, the efficiency of of the design of the system. Um, if we're uh, looking at the Let's see, for the, for the pumps, uh, obviously we're trying to have a stable flow and pressure, and, and with the FC-103, we can operate, you know, direct uh, uh, signal to the drive using, you know, from the controller 420 milliamp, or obviously if uh, in the process uh, with field bus. So, uh, again, the flexibility is uh, we, we can either do a lot of the controlling built into the drive or actually, you know, uh, just be waiting, kind of uh, receiving the signal from a, a controller, for example. For uh, the smart condensing fan controller, this is just something to share, again, uh, when we're operating multiple fans in, in parallel. So in, in this case, um, you know, here we're just showing this from our design guide that, you know, we're obviously uh, monitoring the, the, the head pressure 
and the discharge uh, pressure and, and basically in feedback, feedback is fed to the drive and then the drive is going to react uh, uh, depending on what the process is calling for. Uh, there, here we're just trying to say is the drive can be programmed to do a lot of the itself without the use of a controller. So in some cases if there is expansion and um, you know, to reduce cost or additional equipment, you know, there is a lot of intelligence built into the drive. There's a built-in PID and uh, um, there's other um, capabilities where, again, to reduce the overall cost. Um, um, again, it's just an option and, and to make you aware that that's capable. Uh, we, we do have dedicated uh, compressor uh, application functionality, again, built in uh, to the drive. Um, some of the things we're, you know, obviously going to monitor is uh, minimum speed control because obviously we worry about lubrication. Uh, there's integrated cascade control, for example, if there's multiple compressors that, you know, there can be automated sequencing as uh, compressors coming on. Uh, it's kind of a built-in soft start uh, built into the VFD uh, for the compressor application. So. Again, a lot of flexibility we're trying to uh, improve in, in the overall efficiency uh, of the system, but also be uh, utilize the, the, the intelligence in the drive to, to make it easy, obviously, to work with um, for your applications. So I, I'm really close on time, which is perfect. So again, uh, we really thank everyone who's joining today. I know there's a lot of... Um, uh, different applications and controls and, and things like that, but but again, it's just to give you a sense of some of the things that we can do uh, from a drive manufacturer, and, and obviously we look forward to partnering with uh, with all of you uh, as industrial refrigeration uh, and, and working together. So um, I, I thank you all, and, and obviously uh, if there's any questions or. Yep. Hey, um, before we get to the questions, I just wanted to reiterate the uh, the screen, uh, the slide on the screen here. If you haven't already, um, please sign up for our newsletters so you can be um, alerted to webinars like these. Um, our e-newsletter, any kind of Dan Foss news and events, you'll be notified. So, um, in the email I send out or we send out after the meeting, it'll include this link. So I um, encourage you to register for or to subscribe to our newsletter. So uh, yeah, Brian, you did mention uh, questions, and we have a few. For everybody else, um, don't forget you can uh, add your question in the text box. You can write me, and uh, we will uh, answer your questions. So uh, let's get to it. The first question is, um, this might have been discussed, but what is the horsepower and voltage ranges available? Okay, great question. So. Um the voltage uh, for U.S. market will be uh, it's 380 to 480 volt, uh, and power size up to um, 600 uh, horsepower uh, for this FC103. Uh, if you're doing Canadian voltage, we offer uh, you know 600 volt uh, VFD up to 650 horsepower, um, and that's just for this FC103. Uh, Danfoss does have an industrial product, the uh, FC302 that I'm not mentioning here, but if there's an application where you have a compressor that's larger than, you know, 600 horsepower, uh, we do have an alternative, you know, product uh, that can handle some of those sizes. But for this product, uh, it would be 600 horsepower, um, 480 volt, and then uh, 650 horsepower, uh, 600 volt. Great. And um, the next question we have is, um, what would the typical lead time be, both for a standard bare drive and a panel solution? Okay, so on a standard bare drive, um, what we have to, to classify is anything under 100 horsepower is typically, um, you know, three days. Um, I, I showed you in the video, there's a test crane and things like that. So what happens is, even on a rush order, uh, when the drive is being built, uh, it goes through that test screen, and uh, some of the larger drives, that test screen, it can take up to three hours for a full test of the VFD before we ship it. We're not allowed to bypass that, so uh, we are lean manufacturing, meaning, uh, you know, if you drive by an I-39, you'll see two buildings. Uh, a second building is a 100,000 square foot uh, warehouse where we actually have a lot of uh, components. Um, one thing I might not have mentioned, I'm not sure, 
um, basically anything built uh, under 100 horsepower actually is built in our headquarters in Gracine, Denmark. Okay, so what we do is we have 90% of the VFDs built. Uh, it'll come here, um, it, and then there will be enhancements uh, for you know USA market, for example, Ethernet IP. So that's where they're going to install like the Ethernet IP card or the LAN works or BACnet. The drive will get tested and then it'll be shipped. Uh, for the Globe, uh, the Loves Park facility that I showed you that video is building for the world anything over 100 horsepower, and I believe they're up to 1.8 megawatt. So on those larger drives, let's just say we're talking, you know, 500 horsepower VFD. Now we're talking a couple weeks uh, to get built, um, and then again on a panel. So it depends if you're talking VFD soft start panel. Uh, that that would be different than if we were just talking with the drive with the a disconnect bypass. So um, as the drive gets bigger, uh, the lead time would get a little longer. But if it's just a drive with a disconnect, again, that, that would probably be five business days. Um, but once we get into larger horsepower, that's where it, you know I'd have to uh, confirm with you just, again, based on the power size. If it's 100 horsepower, um, you know, we're building, I believe, you know, over 100 of these uh, you know, this one range, it's a frame, but we call it D-frame. They're building over, you know, 100 a day. Um, so, again, um, it just depends on the power size. But as we get bigger, it'll get a little longer. But, you know, everything under 50 horsepower, you're, you're, you're talking, without it being urgent, if it's just standard, it's, it's three days. All right, great. Well, if um, nobody else has any questions, that is, that is everything. Um, thank you, Brian. Thank you, everybody who... Uh, Thank you to everybody who attended today, and um, as I mentioned earlier, the meeting has been recorded, and I will send out the recording to everybody um, soon. So thank you again, and have a great day. Thank you all.